KS Heating and Air, the team ensuring your comfort. Here's your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, October the 7th, 2018. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray this morning. We'll be breaking records with this video, not with temperatures today. We're going to have a record number of graphics and uh, a lot to talk about as we uh, get into uh, an interesting October Gulf tropical storm or pro quite probably a hurricane as we go through the week ahead. Let's take a look at some temperatures across central Alabama early on this Sunday morning. We're mostly in the uh, middle and upper 60s across the region. A few 70-degree uh, temperatures out there. We'll uh, be near 90 degrees today uh, in many, many areas across central Alabama. In fact, it may be the last time that many of us hit 90 degrees this year uh, as a pattern change is in store for us across central Alabama. Rainfall today will be uh, extremely limited. A few isolated showers possible, mainly over northwestern Alabama, where they could be a little more organized, but most of the state high and dry today. Tropical depression number 14 uh, was uh, christened uh, at 4 a.m. this morning. Of course, we've been tracking it uh, since yesterday. I've uh, been tracking it for about two weeks, uh, but uh, actually began issuing advisories on the system yesterday as a potential tropical cyclone. And uh, now this morning, the system has top winds of 35 miles an hour in the Western Caribbean. Uh, very uh, evident on the uh, Belize radar. I should have uh, grabbed a, an image of that for you this morning. Uh, but the center is there. The system is uh, fairly organized, and it does appear that it will become uh, a tropical storm later today and quite possibly a hurricane as it makes its way across the northern Gulf of Mexico. A uh, little bit of wind shear impinging on the system right now, 20 to 30 knots, uh, an elongated trough of low pressure across the uh, western Caribbean and southern Gulf of Mexico, uh, preventing the system from uh, strengthening yet, but it continues to become more organized even uh, in spite of that wind shear. Uh, and uh, as it moves into the southern Gulf of Mexico, it will continue to have uh, warm uh, ocean water to draw from, and uh, wind shear value should continue to uh, decrease as it moves into the Gulf. And for that reason, uh, now there are indications that the system could well become a hurricane uh, before it makes landfall on the northern Gulf Coast on Wednesday. Now, let's set the stage. What's going on in the upper atmosphere? Uh, here's uh, the, the pattern at the jet stream level showing a very deep trough over the western United States. It's going to cause uh, flooding and severe weather problems all across the central United States for the next three days. Uh, big subtropical ridge of high pressure that's been dominating our weather across the southeastern United States. They're centered over the uh, North Carolina coast. Uh, that uh, ridge will begin to uh, relax its control, and the trough will progress to the east. Here's tomorrow uh, looking at the uh, position of the trough west of the Rockies. And then uh, by Tuesday morning, uh, we see it uh, beginning to move on to the central part of the United States, and as it does, it will sort of be weakening and lifting off to the north, north uh, to the north at that point. You can see the uh, evidence of the high completely gone, and uh, this sets up the channel for a uh, tropical storm or Hurricane Michael to come to the north. This is the GFS for Monday at noon, showing the uh, center of the tropical storm over the southern Gulf of Mexico after having made the passage between Cuba and the Yucatan and uh, beginning to get its act together. Here's uh, Tuesday at noon showing the system over the central Gulf of Mexico, the GFS depicting a 970 millibar tropical storm at that point. Uh, as you can see across central Alabama, no effects for us. Uh, even the beaches of Alabama and northwest Florida, showers beginning to show up, winds beginning to pick up in those areas, uh, but uh, those will that will be the day that preparations will be in full stead for Tropical Storm or Hurricane Michael. Now, by, uh, by Tuesday evening at 7 p.m., the system uh, uh, is a little further north, uh, south of uh, Pensacola there, uh, continuing on to the north, or beginning to turn to the north-northeast in advance of that trough. A few showers beginning to show up across central Alabama by, Wednesday, by Tuesday afternoon. Now, by um, Tuesday night into early Wednesday, I think we'll begin to see uh, a good bit of shower activity across central Alabama. Uh, conditions will, beginning, will be beginning to deteriorate rapidly along the Gulf Coast, especially along the northwest Florida coast by Wednesday morning. The center uh, still, the GFS uh, depicting a, a very strong tropical storm or a minimal hurricane at that point, uh, setting its sight somewhere between uh, probably Mobile and Cedar Key, but it uh, appears uh, if you use the GFS that it's probably going to be on the central uh, portion of the northwest Florida coast, somewhere there uh, between Pensacola and Panama City. This is the wind field off the GFS Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. 
uh, showing those uh, strong tropical storm and hurricane force winds beginning to uh, arrive on the Gulf Coast. Uh, the Gulf Coast uh, gusts uh, with the system uh, approaching 100 miles per hour, so that will be uh, something that we'll have to watch very closely. Now, the system moves on inland uh, somewhere around uh, 9 a.m. to noon on Wednesday, according to the GFS. Uh, it's beginning to turn to the northeast at that point. Moves over uh, southeastern Alabama with some uh, very strong, very heavy rainfall and strong winds at that point. We'll see uh, a good bit of power outages down in southeastern Alabama uh, over into southern Georgia. You can see uh, also some rainfall uh, affecting much of Alabama at that point on Wednesday into Wednesday night into early Thursday morning. And uh, we'll take a look at some rainfall totals in uh, just a moment. Uh, the wind field uh, by Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. shows the strongest winds over southern Georgia, the center passing near Eufaula and uh, moving into, uh, into Georgia at that point. So uh, the storm will turn rapidly to the northeast then and move on out. And then the uh, trough that we've been talking about out to the west will deliver us a cold front. That cold front will cross Alabama on Thursday. Uh, should be fairly dry. Could be a few showers scattered along it. But look at those dew points moving in upper 50s and by the time we get to uh, friday night football uh as high school games kick off friday evening it's going to be quite comfortable across uh across north and central alabama with dew points dropping into the 40s and 50s and that means uh, temperatures will be uh, a little on the coolish side for a change as we head toward friday now here's the official rainfall forecast from the uh, weather prediction center showing a uh, quite a tight gradient uh across uh, central alabama with the heaviest rainfall uh, generally to the south of I-85. You can see um, generally rainfall amounts of uh, 1 to 2 inches uh, south of uh, I-59, uh, but generally uh, generally around 1 to 2 inches for north and north central Alabama, uh, 2 inches or greater for parts of the southern parts of central Alabama. Now, uh, as we go on through time, there's the GFS Wednesday at noon showing that wind field, uh, the system moving up uh, into central Alabama. But let me introduce the idea of a little bit of uncertainty. The GFS is certainly the faster of the two global models. And uh, even with that, you can see still quite a bit of spread in the ensemble members. Each one of these is a different run of the model, uh, sort of perturbed at the beginning. Uh, the initial conditions changed just slightly to give us some idea about what some other outcomes might be. And you can see the GFS still a fairly wide range of solutions. Uh, Wednesday at noon at landfall, the uh, ensemble mean shows the center moving in uh, between Destin and Panama City, but you could see the low could be up as far as uh, in central Alabama. It could still be hanging out over the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, hang on to that thought for a second because the, here's the European operational version uh, showing uh, the general same idea on landfall, maybe near or just west of Panama City. But this is Wednesday night at midnight, so you can tell the system, uh, the, G the European is about 12 to 15 hours slower uh, with the movement, and I think that's going to be interesting as we go through time. Uh, here are the uh, ensemble members off of the European, showing, uh, again, a widespread range of options uh, there for early Thursday morning, all the way from uh, up in uh, south-central Georgia to still hanging back out over the Gulf of Mexico. So uh, believe me, uh, the uh, issue is not settled exactly the timing on this system. Now, let's look at some factors for intensification. Uh, first, sea surface temperatures across the Western Caribbean are quite warm still this time of year. They're quite warm still over the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, tropical cyclone needs 26 degrees uh, Celsius in order to uh, be able to maintain and intensify. We see that we clearly have that over um, the Western Caribbean all the way up into the Gulf of Mexico. Now, the good news is um, we've got really strong oceanic heat content over the Caribbean. But once the system moves into the Gulf, it's going to lose that uh, really intense, uh, deep, warm water that uh, sometimes leads to uh, rapid intensification. So uh, hopefully we won't see a rapidly intensifying hurricane, although I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, uh, if we're dealing with uh, you know, a 100-mile-per-hour hurricane at some point uh, by midweek. Now, this uh, the, do not adjust your set. Uh, this is wind shear. Uh, Tuesday at uh, at noon, and I wanted to show it um, uh, because it shows that uh, the wind shear over the northern Gulf of Mexico in uh, in ahead of the system uh, will not be a problem for keeping it organized. So I think that means that these ideas that the storm will intensify to a hurricane are quite viable. So a uh, little bit of uncertainty still in the track forecast. Um, we'll have to 
wait and see. The hurricane hunters will be in there later today. Of course, we'll be looking very closely at model data as we go through time. Now, uh, there's the front, or there's the secondary front coming in on Saturday. Uh, a reinforcing shot of cooler air moving in. Could be a few showers across north and central Alabama on Saturday. Uh, of course, Alabama, Auburn, UAB, all at home. Uh, we've got midday uh, kickoffs for Auburn and UAB. Could be an isolated chance with shower. Temperatures will be in the 70s. Should be a fairly nice day for football. Alabama takes on Missouri and Tuscaloosa uh, on Saturday evening. And, um, and then I think the showers will be out of the way with the temperatures cooling down into the 60s. Here's uh, the general trend off of uh, the European looking at uh, temperatures over the next 10 days, uh, showing a general downward trend, as you can expect. Some 40s out there. Uh, by next uh, Monday, or probably that would be Tuesday night, Wednesday morning. That'll be interesting. The GFS or the GFS showing uh, a very similar trend. Uh, the European only predicting about an inch of rain at Birmingham. These are 16-day uh, temperatures off of the European, uh, showing that a gradual downward trend will be in the 70s by the weekend, uh, with the lows in the 50s. That'll feel quite nice. That secondary shot of uh, reinforcing cool air comes in. Putting us in the 60s for highs next Monday and Tuesday. Um, and then some very comfortable 70s for the rest of that week. So that will be interesting. Going out a little further in time, let's look at uh, Thursday or Wednesday night, the uh, 17th, showing a uh, return of moisture uh, as high pressure slides on off to the east in the Western Atlantic. Uh, we see moisture and precipitation moving back into our forecast. The GFS picking up on that and uh, and predicting that we'll see some rain by next uh, Tuesday night and Wednesday. And then as we go out into voodoo territory, end of the period, this is uh, Monday morning, October 22nd, showing uh, low pressure over southern Arkansas and a uh, good bit of precipitation across Alabama. Quite a stormy look to it, and that could be uh, one of the first uh, sessions of severe weather as we uh, head into our fall severe weather season. So we'll be keeping a very close eye on Michael right here on Alabama WX throughout the week, keeping you updated with the very latest information. And so you'll want to stay tuned for that. So that's your Weather Extreme video for this Sunday, October 7th. I'll be back with a weather video next Sunday. James will be here with two a day starting tomorrow. And, of course, Scott Martin will have a video next Saturday. But until I sit in the seat again next Sunday morning, have a great week and keep an eye on the sky. KS Heating and Air, the team ensuring your comfort.